Hey everybody, it's Peter from Brantford Kia, and wow, we already have a comment. We are live here at uh, in our unfinished video bay. We're just finishing getting setting up, getting set up. Excuse me. So if you are looking for a uh, 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 how to what we're doing here, what's going on, or if, basically if you're joining us after we're live, I'm going to show you exactly how to join us while we are live. So if I can flip my camera around here, come on, there we go. Every day at two o'clock Eastern, or every weekday, anyways, at two o'clock Eastern time. We go live from our unfinished video bay. We'll talk about that in a second. Just look, go to YouTube, look for our channel right there. So once you see a channel like that, you click on that. And if you refresh the page at two o'clock, like I'm doing right now, it is two o'clock right up top there, you will see a live video right there. And that is today's live video. So we're gonna click on that. And the reason I'm doing this is, oh, we get to watch an ad. We're gonna skip out of this because what kind of ads are we watching here, Pat? All right, there we go. Albert's here. All right. I thought we'd have a few less people for our uh, minivan video, but I'm glad you are all here because minivans are some of my favorite vehicles, and that's uh, going to surprise people for a second. All right. Now I've got my comments up. So the reason I did that is I can see you all over here on my comments over there on my big screen. So here's the deal. I am here because I assist with our service team. I'm allowed to be in the building. But you can see our construction crew is not allowed in the building. This is going to be our video bay and our delivery bay, and it's unfinished. So we're working in not ideal conditions, but we've decided to do a live video from here every day. And I guess when they come back with the construction, we'll have to figure out what we're going to do. But that's why we're here. So there's a lot to talk about today. Uh, we're going to talk about two specific vehicles, the 2020 Kia Sedona LX, which is what you see in front of you, and the LX Plus, which is what you see in the background there. I like these videos, I like these vehicles, excuse me, so this is going to be fun for me. I want to talk a little bit, really briefly, about how we're doing business, because I've had some YouTube comments, we've had a whole bunch of things come in recently that sort of frustrate us with stuff that's going on outside of here. So, when I say to you that we've been doing online sales for a while, and we do these videos for a reason, and these kinds of things are going on, we had a person write in on YouTube recently saying that they got their vehicle delivery with all these COVID-19 times, and they're super frustrated because they know nothing about their vehicle. Their, their dealership didn't set the vehicle up properly, didn't explain all the safety features. So they've come to us for help. And of course, we're helping them out. So here's the thing. If you're in the greater Ontario area and you're looking to buy vehicles and you don't know how to do that nowadays, the short answer is buy from us. Tim always says I'm too humble and I, shouldn't, I should tell people we're the experts. I'm starting to realize we really are the experts. Buying a vehicle online, buying a vehicle in the new times is different than it was in the past. And you need a team that can really take care of you, not just to facilitate the sale, but to be there for you after the sale. Everything that we do in the store, we can do online. And if you like the idea of these personalized videos, or of these videos uh, live, imagine a personalized video with the car that you're interested, whether it's used or new, we can do that. Right from here, we can go through every single detail. You will know your car inside and out before you take delivery. And after you take delivery, you can call me up and you can talk about features and we can do more things, whether you're in the dealership or not, depending on what we're allowed to do. If you want me to go over features for you, I can do that. So Tim keeps telling me I need to tell people we're experts. I'm seeing so many people writing into us, especially since we started these live video series, um, just with frustrations as people are going through the growing pains, other dealers are going through the growing pains of learning how to do what we've been doing for a while. So thanks for letting me go my little rant there. Um, if you're looking to buy a vehicle, just buy from us and it'll be easier for everybody, including for me. <laughs> All right, uh, here we go. So when I talk about minivans, a lot of people sort of tune in and they say, okay, I don't like minivans, they're just not cool. Well, let me just talk about that. I grew up in the 1980s, I was born late 70s, grew up in the 80s. You can all figure out how old I am right now. And when I grew up with these vehicles in the 1980s, they introduced the minivan, Chrysler minivan. And it was not a good car. They took a really crappy car, the K car, a boring car, and they made an even more boring version of it. And the only reason it sold is because it was inexpensive and super practical. So let me tell you about the sort of origins of why we hate minivans. We hate minivans because those early minivans had double digit horsepower. They were terrible, they were boring, they weren't stylish. All they were is cheap and practical. So people got in the habit of buying cheap minivans and practical minivans, and they would justify it because it was great for the family. So here's the thing. Let's go back to 1993. So we're well beyond the early introduction of minivans. The Mustang Cobra came out. 1993 was an all new design for the Mustang. The Mustang Cobra came out. It had 235 horsepower on the highest performance version of the Mustang. 
if these cars had come out for the first time today, if this car was just being introduced today, it would be the ultimate crossover vehicle for families. This car has 41 more horsepower than a 1993 Mustang Cobra GT. Minivans aren't boring, they're super practical, and more important than what the vehicle is, it's what the vehicle allows you to do. And a lot of families that have these minivans talk to us about all the things they can do. And that's part of what I'm gonna to talk to you about today. So, we've got already five minutes in, I haven't even talked about the vehicle, let's take a look. All right, in front of me is, like I said, 276 horsepower. This is a powerful vehicle. I have two keys here. This is the key for the LX model. This LX model in front of me is where Kia's minivan line begins. And it's really, really well equipped. So here's the key. Here's the compromise you're gonna have to make if you go with the cheapest minivan we can sell new. You gotta go old fashioned and you gotta have a key. Push button start comes on the LX Plus. We're gonna talk about that in a second. People getting the trims and different, yeah, here we go. We're getting the trims right now. So we have four trims of the, of the Sedona. We used to have a whole bunch more. For 2020, they got rid of the L model, which is the base model, and they got rid of the SX Plus, SXL, SXL Plus. Some of those are replaced by our Telluride, to be honest, but now we have simplified trims. So I wanna jump into this LX model, which again, is where our minivans begin. Here we go, right down here. Powered seats. Every minivan we sell has a powered seat and a power adjustable lumbar. And the big thing you're gonna find when we talk about these cars is comfort. These cars are really comfortable for long trips. We're gonna open up the side here. Now, you'll notice I'm opening that door manually. Maybe you didn't notice, but that's a manual opening door. Simple, works really well. It's very well weighted as well. So when I just touch the door handle here with two fingers on level ground, it shuts nice and slowly all on its own. So you don't have to pull that door shut if you have an elderly person in the back or even a little younger child that wants to help out and close the doors themselves. They can do that even without power doors. Really well designed vehicle. You'll notice our minivans are eight passenger minivans. So you have a center seat in the middle here. That seat can very easily fold, tumble and uh, come out. So if you want that seat out, just have a seven seat. Not a problem. You can do that on your own. You can keep it when you need it. Um, I'm gonna to try to show you some of the seats folding, but just before I go too far, one of our most popular minivan videos is a uh, minivan video that it's about 18 minutes long, and I show you every possible seating configuration in these vans. Uh, it's been well received, it's got well over 100,000 views, so uh, that's a good minivan video to see if you wanna see all the seating configurations. Big thing here in the back seats, everybody wants to know, does it have Stow & Go? Stow & Go is a Chrysler brand name thing, and here's the thing, it doesn't. And that's such a good thing. And let me tell you why. These seats are designed to fit an adult. They will fit an adult comfortably for a long, long time. They're just as big and comfortable as the front seats. They don't have thin padding. They don't have extra small seats, seven eighths size seats, or even smaller size seats, three quarter size seats, because that's what you need to do when you fold this seat into a little storage space in the ground. If you wanna take four by eight sheets of plywood everywhere you go all the time, by all means, buy a Chrysler van. It's great for cargo. They make cargo specific vans like that. If you are gonna take people 99% of the time and just take cargo every other percent of the time, this van needs to be on the top of your list. It's very safe, it's very reliable, and it's very, very comfortable. So we're gonna sit in those seats in a minute. Uh, if you just wanna see real quick how they fold up, this is one uh, little design. Now, I haven't moved this front seat forward. They, of course, move front and back um, as you need. But you can see one hand, I fold it up like that and you've got a big access to your cargo area or your third row. Now I'll show you the third row up in the other van, it's down this van. So that's how the seat sits, like that, to get in and out. You can move that seat further forward towards the driver's seat, it's just where I had it there. These are really comfortable seats and that's what you really need to know in the minivan. I'm gonna hop to the back now. Open the trunk, again. You're gonna notice the old fashioned part of this, manual style trunk. You don't need a power trunk lid, then the entry level minivan's exactly where you need. Tons of storage space. Again, that four by eight sheet of plywood seems to be what everybody asks for. It is gonna hang out the back. It's, it is easily gonna fit in the vehicle though. There is over four feet of space in the narrowest part up here, so you can slide it in right flush to the ground. No problem back here. We'll show you these seats in a second. They pop up and down easily. In the back, you do have a 12 volt port here. You have a little door over this side, which keeps your jack because you do have a spare tire. A lot of people are concerned of some of our smaller cars, they don't have spare tires anymore. We'll talk about the spare tire. It's underneath the vehicle, but you have a jack in that door there. You can see the rear seats would have speakers and cup holders right by them. And uh, in the ceiling, even on this base model, there are vents in the ceiling. We're gonna talk about that in a second. Uh, don't worry about that wrinkly light there. There's actually some packing tape still up on there. 
that uh, the way the vehicles come. You can see the center seat armrest when it's folded down, place for your cell phone, place for your cups, easy to hold. So again, if you have any questions, keep asking them. I will come back to them. I know that you're missing some of them, uh, or I know that I'm missing some of them, excuse me, but I will come back to them. Going to jump in the driver's seat now. The driver's seat again of our LX model vehicle. So it is set comfortably to where I want it to be. You can see there's tons of legroom. Actually, we'll put this down if I can do that with one hand. Yes, I can. There we go. Put the headrest up, put the armrest down. You can sort of see what the back seat looks like. Now we're going to hop in the front seat. I do have a light. It might be dead. Somebody else had to use the light, but we'll let it go as long as it can. Okay. Hopping in, I should grab that key that I had in my hand. There we go. As we hop in the car, key start. This is the only compromise you're making is you have to put the key in. And in my case, I have to do it with my left hand because the camera's in right hand. All right, looking in the dash, left side tachometer and temperature gauge, right side speedometer and fuel gauge. In the center is a display screen. That display screen is super clear. It's got a lot of um, information there. You can show just your speedometer. You can show fuel economy, all kinds of things. Fuel economy, real world fuel economy is excellent on this vehicle. We're going to talk powertrain in a couple minutes. We're going to work our way through the inside before we get to the powertrain. Over here is something that a lot of people don't expect on the um, entry level minivan. This is a nice big backup camera, so you can see that. Big clear backup camera, so it's hard to film a screen and tell you how clear it is, but it's excellent as far as clarity goes. The other thing is you also have the backup beepers even on this entry level vehicle. So as you back up, it will beep progressively quicker as you approach something. And in this dash display, I left the door open for the reason. You'll see the van there. It will tell you which side and how close you are to a various item. So even if you don't notice it, let's face it, if you're a parent and you've got kids, sometimes you're a little distracted. So even if you don't notice it in the screen, you will get, you will get some beeping in the rear and it will tell you um, which side or how close things are in a little sonar display screen there. So super cool feature there. Again, back to this display screen. Yeah, back of a clean screen is very clear. It's very accurate, it's right. So this display, again, if you've been watching our videos for a while, you've seen this display before. It's our eight inch display, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay is standard. So what that means is even on the base level vehicle, you get navigation through your cell phone. So whether you want Google Maps, Apple Maps, Waze, something else, you can use that. It uses very, very little data, so you can use that, just plug it in and off you go. And of course, you also have all the advantages of playing some music through there and uh, texting, calling, all those kinds of things. If you don't plug your phone in for Android Auto Apple CarPlay, you still have Bluetooth, Bluetooth streaming, so great system there. And it's a touchscreen system with redundant buttons. So if I want to turn the radio on, I can just touch that radio screen there. I could have also, let's turn it off, I could have also just hit the radio button up here, does the same thing. So some of the redundancies in the buttons, that one took me a little quicker, so let's go back home. Now you can see if I tap the radio, it goes to that radio screen. So a lot of these are just redundant buttons. What I like to do is set this button up. You can set it up for almost anything you want. I like to use that to get to my Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So what kind of sound system does it come with? Just the basic Kia sound system on these two models today. No real difference in the sound system at all. Uh, I believe there might be a Harman Kardon in the top line, but I haven't checked the specs on that. So I'll just uh, have to double, correct, double check on that one. All right, scrolling down here. Again, base level, entry level. Kia doesn't have base level or entry level. You don't have wheel covers. You've got proper alloy, or alloy wheels. You can see me reflecting in there, so it's a nice kind of clear thing. You have manual controls for the air conditioning, but you don't just have the front air. You also have the rear air. Now, what does rear lock or rear on mean? You can set that temperature, heating and air conditioning, I should say. You can set it to any uh, temperature or any heat you want. Rear lock and rear on talks about these controls back here. So I'm behind the front driver's seat on the ceiling. There is a, a, uh, there is a control piece right there in the middle row on the right side of the vehicle where the rear passengers can control their own heating and air conditioning. Now, if you want to lock them out because you don't trust them, which is what I would do with my kids. I mean, I trust them just not with things like important things like temperature control. If you want to lock them out, you just rear lock it. So you lock the rear controls out. And if you want to turn the system on or off, you can just turn it on right from there. So kind of a cool system there. And uh, yeah, just you have the extra controls. I'm gonna move the gear shift out of the way for a second. My LED light just turned out just when I need it the most. It is uh, dead. Sorry about that, people. This is what happens when we do a live video and we share uh, pieces and parts. All right, down here, USB port. That's where you plug in your Android Auto Apple CarPlay. You also have a 12 volt port there. Scrolling a little bit to the right, the passenger side seat. Oh, nope, excuse me, LX Plus. We're gonna talk about a passenger side port down there. Wrong van. <laughs> so this is the LX. All right, scrolling down again. 
This car doesn't have what Kia calls drive modes, but it actually does. It has the active eco mode, which means it has two drive modes. The active eco allows you to, if you're driving efficiently anyways, it'll work with you to get great fuel efficiency. Heated seats and heated steering wheel. Base model car. Again, not something everybody expects. This is where we start with our minivan line. So you have passenger side and driver side, three levels of seat heating and heated steering wheel. If you've never had a heated steering wheel before, you will never, ever go back. Big difference in the, um, in the uh, minivans now is uh, if you have, if you've looked at the Sedonas in the past, they had a six speed transmission. They now have an eight speed transmission. So eight speed transmission, uh, the fuel economy numbers by the books are actually very similar but it makes drivability better. And if you've ever got in a car and said, wow, this drives really nice, that's the type of transmission this is. It just drives really well. It's always in the right gear. It's always got good power. And like I said, more horsepower than a Mustang Cobra GT from 1993. So, uh, all right. So the other reason the heated steering wheel is important, I think to point out is that when you have a touch screen, you don't have to wear gloves in your car. So you can touch the screen with your bare hands and you've got that heated steering wheel to keep your hands warm. So. I love that feature. So now we've covered the basics. You also have automa automatic headlights here. I don't know if you can see that. They're set to automatic. You have uh, cruise control, of course, Bluetooth audio controls right there. We're gonna leave that key in the car for a second. We're gonna step out to the second key. We're about halfway through the video and I will get to your questions. I just wanna show you the other model. Oh, my uh, camera is sort of G-force affected. So I wanna show you, actually maybe I will pull the other key out. Let me show you the two side by side. Come on, there we go. Okay, we'll go back to my little table here, my little work base, workspace. Here we go. This is the LX key. This is the LX plus key. Now you can see already some of the features that you're adding. There is a powered trunk, we're gonna show you that. There are powered side doors, which you could open through the key fob. And of course you get the little bit of a chrome style and it's a keyless entry, no jackknife style key on this car. So again, from the outside, these cars look basically identical. In fact, I would say they are identical. There is one little difference on the front that I'll show you. This model here, if you've tuned into our Instagram page, my Instagram is under, at underscore uh, Peter underscore, uh, at Peter underscore Brantford underscore Kia. You'll already know the difference. This one has projector beam headlights and no fog lights as we move over to the LX Plus, which happens to be in a, I think, an even nicer color. You're gonna see projector beam headlights and projector beam fog lights. So that's one difference there. Over here, we've got our Teddy in the back. That's just for Albert. I know that you're gonna tune in eventually. And uh, we like to use our uh, brand for Kia Teddy Bear to show luggage space. So we'll show him in a few minutes. All right, so when you see a button on a Kia door like that, you can see that it is a keyless entry. Now, again, my auxiliary light doesn't work. And this is a bit of a darker dash in here. We're gonna hit the start button this time. And same dash in here. So same system in here, but you do have that push button start. Now, a couple little differences here. Again, I apologize that I don't have a light here. Down here, you have a wireless charging pad. So it changes the USB port. Let me just put the car into drive so I can get the gear shift out of the way. Changes this section down here a little bit. This down here is a wireless charge pad. You drop your phone there. This little light uh, lights up. There's an orange light there and it will charge your phone. Down here is where your USB port is. Now I mentioned the extra USB port. There is one for the passenger on the passenger side right there and same system looking all the way up. Same uh, powered heated seats. Big difference here is I had a powered driver's seat before, but now what I've got is a really smart system. You don't see this on any other minivan that I know of. On the side of my passenger seat are two buttons here and they move the seat. So if you have an elderly passenger getting in the front, that's kind of great, but you can also move that seat to create more space for your rear seat passengers. So think that through for a second. When you got somebody jumping in curbside, you can create some extra space for them without leaving the seat. Now, the other thing you can do is as we look up, is you can open all of your power doors. So you're sitting in your driver's seat, you're picking up your kids from school. I can open my passenger side door right from that button there. The door is opening. And depending on who was sitting in the driver's or the passenger seat, oops, now my door's open. I can move this seat to create extra space for them to get in or out all from the driver's seat. So uh, kind of a cool feature right there. And uh, I think that makes a lot of sense in this car. So that means that you don't just have a powered driver's seat, you also have a powered passenger seat. I should mention while I show the upside uh, or the top side here, if I can get back to that, you do also have right here, it comes down slowly, 
There's your uh, little thing so I can see my buddy uh, Teddy Bear back there. We call him Bo the Bear. We had an employee that uh, had to move and he's, his name was Bo. He left around the same time the bear showed up. So to remember Bo, we have Bo the Bear. But there's your wide angle camera or wide angle mirror to see your passengers as well. All right, just gonna jump to the back side now. Again, the power doors, power side doors, I can open them. So we'll go driver's side door just with the button here. Oops, I gotta hold that, excuse me. As I do that, the door opens. I can also just tap this button right here on the door and that'll open. So if you have little kids opening the doors themselves, they just tap that button, the door opens. And of course, to shut the door, you can tap this door here. The windows have pinch protection as well. So if your kids ever are in the windows, and I did show the windows down because I remember our old minivans used to always tip out. These ones come down. Now, if you've never seen our smart trunk before, we can uh, pop the smart trunk simply by approaching the car. I have not got that set up right now to turn on, um, but I could just approach the car with the key fob in my hand. The lights would blink uh, five times in three seconds and the trunk would open on its own. What I'm gonna do today is I can pop it right from the key fob by just holding that down and you can see the trunk pop. Now you can touch the vehicle itself if you wanna do that. Every minivan has a ton of space down here and I mean a ton of space really deep uh, seat well there. And I can show you the seats folding down in a second if you'd like. Same thing back here, you've got the same 12 volt cargo uh, or 12 volt uh, port in the cargo area there. You can see the headrests, I have one up and one down right now. And that just shows you that you can fit full size people in the back and you can get proper head restraints for safety. And I should mention safety is a big thing here. Oh, if you're asking about passenger seven or eight, this is an eight passenger vehicle. The center uh, seat in the middle of both of these vehicles can be removed, so that's this seat right there. That can be removed. Let's take Teddy out of here and throw him in the trunk. One second, Teddy's going for a ride. He's gone. So you can see Teddy's pretty fat. Um, on the Seltos, his tummy touches the upper, uh, upper uh, cover there, and you can see he's below the seat. So when we talk about trunk space in these things, they're incredible. And that's really, like I said, if these vehicles were introduced today, it would be the ultimate crossover vehicle for families. And uh, so there's the eight seat there. And uh, roof rails on top. So you can take kayaks. If you want to spread them real far apart, you can. Uh, Teddy isn't fat, he's chubby. Okay, we'll go with chubby. I think I said chubby. He's a little hefty. He's a little round. All right. The other thing is this vehicle can tow 3,500 pounds. So when I talked about this vehicle and I said, it's not so much about the vehicles, but what it allows you to do. If you're a camper like me, throw a tent trailer behind this thing, go camping. 3,500 pound towing capacity, you can tow that and more. Uh, you can take all the roof rails, bikes up top, kayaks up top, everything you need. Go on a day trip, go on a long trip across the country. We always have people tell us when they go on long trips across the country that they're amazed at the fuel efficiency and the comfort because nobody's complained when they're in this van. And that comes down to having comfortable seats there. So uh, if anybody wants to see headroom, I can show that kind of thing. I'm just going to jump to my questions. I know I missed a whole bunch of them. I will turn on the headlights and taillights in a minute here. Uh, let me just jump into my questions. And I got to scroll up here because I missed a bunch of yours. So bear with me for a second. We'll show you the vehicle. We'll flip around. And Pat and Tim, if I'm missing, I don't know if Tim's on today, but if Pat's there, if I missed anything, let me know. Okay, Carnival, yes. Kia Sedona, Carnival in other markets. Uh, da, 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 da. Maps are great. They update with your phone. Yeah, of course. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, the maps are good that way. Uh, second, third row seats are excellent. Gas mileage is excellent. Yeah, that's right. 2021 Sedona. We're going to talk about that at the end. We're going to talk about powertrain in a minute. Uh, there you go. Pat drove. <laughs> so Pat likes to nickname things, and I, I enjoy Pat's nicknames. Uh, the Van Bergini is what he was saying. Drove one in, with a seven people and luggage to Virginia. Really comfortable. Rides like a Van Bergini. It really does. And when again, when you think about horsepower, 276 horsepower, more than a Mustang GT Cobra from 1993. I'm gonna show you under the hood here. I don't usually do that, but, because um, most time people don't care about the plastic panels, but I will show you under the hood. It's the same thing in both uh, vehicles. Let me see if I can do this with one hand. I need to do that with two hands, one second. We'll set the camera down. I'll be right with you. If you haven't given this video a like already, do me a favor and give it a like. Uh, if you wanna see more, if you like what we're doing with these live videos, that helps me out, lets me know that you uh, appreciate this. I'll be right back. All right, underneath the hood, 3.3 liter V6, same as the Sorento that we looked at yesterday. Uh, this one, again, same eight-speed transmission in there, easy to get to just about everything you need to, easy to service. 
uh, you know, good V6, good reliable V6. We've had really good luck with this engine for a long time. So that's kind of the basics of this vehicle. We're going to show you the lights because you've asked. I'm going to show you, they're the same on both cars, except for the fog lights on the other one. So we'll tr turn them both on for a second here. Let me just get the key back in this model. All right, with rear seats down, is there lots of room? With rear seats down, where is lots of room as much as a pickup? Um, you have more interior space than a pickup truck. It's not, um, so pickup trucks are kind of a interesting animal right now. There's five foot beds, six foot beds, six and a half foot beds. Some of them are wider, some of them are narrower. A minivan still fits a ton of luggage covered. Um, there's more length in it than some small pickup trucks. It's not, you're not gonna fit an eight foot uh, uh, piece of, uh, um, what do you call it? An eight foot uh, piece of drywall or something like that without it hanging out the back. And that's okay, I think. Okay, so here we go. Even on the base model, which is what we're looking at, LX model, you've got this as an LED light strip. Doesn't always show up perfectly. You've got the bright projector beam headlights, which as soon as I come down, you can see, if I get right in their light path, extremely bright with nice sharp cutoff. So very, very modern headlights there. I'll come around the back side here. You do have signal lights in the mirrors there, and they can be seen around the back. This side here, again, Kia's has updated their lighting. So very base model car here. You've got sort of some uh, design in there. Your signal lights are right to the right there, and of course, backup lights there. We'll do the same thing over here. We'll turn the card on. I gotta step in the car because I got the key in my pocket. There we go. And we'll turn the lights on, which they are. Fog lights are on, there we go. Same thing over on this car exactly. You can sort of see that LED light strip coming along the bottom. Really looks nice and modern. When the headlights are off, it's your daytime running light. Fog light down low gives you a little extra width, which we'll come to. There we go, nice and bright as well. Told me to leave the lights on in auto and it's a very good tip. Yes, so yeah, if you, if you leave the lights in the auto setting, that's where you should leave it for almost everyday driving. The only thing it's, only time it's ever a problem, and I'll show you what I mean in a second, only time it's ever a problem to have the lights in the auto setting is sometimes in a snowstorm, you can have a lot of ambient light. Oops, this is a powered door, there we go. So sometimes in a snowstorm or in a foggy condition, you can have a lot of ambient light and your rear lights won't be on. So there's your rear lights there. You can see they carry right through into the back of the tailgate. Down here is just reflectors, no lights in the bottom there. So uh, there we go. Ports in the second row. Albert, I already checked because I knew you were coming in. On these two models, there are none. If you step up to the SX model, you have a USB port and a regular plug in that middle row seat there. Uh, I expect them to do more in the update that's coming, uh, the next generation of uh, Sedona that will come. Uh, but the SX model, and if those of you who are looking for the SX model, I have a video on YouTube where I do about a 15 to 20 minute walk around of that car. It's got about 100,000 views on it, and it is the um, Sedona, 2020 Sedona SX. So feel free to check out that video, that'll cover. So then we'll look at the LX, you'll have seen the LX Plus, and the SX is the next thing. I don't think I have an SX tech video up. I don't think we have one in stock right now. So uh, there we go. So, all right, we're at 28 and a half minutes. We've talked engine powertrain. We've talked all kinds of things. If I've missed your question or you have a question, please let me know in the comments below. And again, I wanna reiterate, I'm getting a lot of conversation now. Because we're doing these videos, I get emails and other stuff. Uh, best thing to do is just comment on the YouTube channel. It's easiest for me to grab it there. But a lot of people are reaching out to me about good and bad experiences with uh, other dealers that are trying to figure out how to do things online. It's one thing to sell a car online. It's another thing to do everything you do online. And we've been doing this for years. Um, Somebody said to me, I'm famous because we have 100,000 views on our Sedona videos. We've done millions of views. Uh, we have more organic views than many uh, manufacturers. We have more subscribers than some manufacturers. We do things online and we do things online well. So now that you're talking about buying cars online, if you want a personalized experience, we can do that with you so you can see your car, you can understand your car. And if you're gonna spend money on a brand new vehicle for yourself or even a used vehicle, you should make sure you know what you're buying and you should make sure you're comfortable with your sales. So, Again, if you're in that Ontario area, I'm pleading for your business a little more than usual because I feel for my customers who uh, have reached out to me from across North America really with the changes and they're starting to find out that their dealers aren't really equipped to deal with things the way we are and I think that matters right now. So Tim and I are gonna do a video tomorrow or very soon anyways, we're gonna talk about um, how to buy a car online and what we can do for you as a dealer and what you should expect from your dealer. Second row windows, is that how far they go down? Yes, it is. Oh, you know what? The one thing I didn't show you this is how far they go down, which is a pretty good size opening when you see it in person. But yeah, they do have a little bit of intrusion 
when they come down, it goes right to there, so they have to keep some space from it going all the way down. One cool little feature in the windows here, uh, let me just shut one of these doors. Let me just uh, see if I can do that from here. We'll reach across to the passenger door. I'm gonna shut this door for a second. The LX Plus and Up model, which is what I'm in right now, the LX Plus model, has these shades. And if you have kids, now the camera's gonna adjust so you're not gonna see them really well. But if you pop those shades up like that, they are sort of sun shades and uh, they're built right into the car, not just the second row, but the third row as well. You can see that little tab on the bottom and the two tabs up top. Those are really cool sun shades. They work really well. The camera are automatically adjusts so you don't get a sense of how well they work. Um, but they just pop up and in. And of course, as I say, they're easy to use. I'm struggling with it. I got the wrong hand. Let me just use my right hand. There we go. Oh, now I jammed it. Honest, everybody, they're super easy to use. So you want honesty in your videos? There we go. Oh, you know what? It's because I'm pulling it the wrong way. I'm twisting it the wrong way. So once I know how to do that better, then you'll see. So they fit nice and tight to the door. They clip up top there. They do clip out easily. I was just twisting it the wrong way there. You have to sort of uh, roll it a little tiny bit to unclip it there and I was rolling it the wrong way. Anyways, there you go. So Pat's answering a question for someone. Uh, that helps, okay. So there you go, everyone. Uh, those of you that are tuning in now and have seen the, the next generation Sedona, I saw a question about that. It is coming. Uh, I believe it'll be, I don't know if it'll be 2021 model or not. We'll have to sort of see what happens with everything. It does look like it's gonna have some more screens. I would assume it has some more ports, but I would assume the value is gonna be really uh, right there. And again, safety and value is what this vehicle is all about. Price in Canadian dollars, good question. I had that memorized at the beginning of the video. Uh, the 319, sorry. MSRP is $31,995 for the LX model, and it is $34,595 for the LX Plus model. So those are those two models that we have in the bay here today. Uh, really undercutting, when you start looking at features per dollar, uh, our competition, reliability's right there with everyone else, and uh, yeah. So, so Pat's talking to Russell about something that's perfect. Is there anything else I missed, guys, that you want me to cover? We haven't got a vehicle set up for tomorrow yet, Again, I've always got a few ideas, but if you have suggestions, I'm open to suggestions all week this week. Uh, we've sort of stuck to sort of mainstream vehicles, the mid-level to lower-end vehicles, just to give you an idea of what we've got. Um, if you want me to keep uh, doing these videos, then just let me know. Uh, give me a thumbs up on this video. That would help me out a lot. But I think we've covered most of the basics. I didn't sit in the seats, but like I said, if you want to see a really good seating and cargo capacity video, uh, we've got a Sedona video. Like I said, it's got over 100,000 views on the 2019. Uh, just uh, if you look on our channel for um, seating and cargo uh, Sedona, that, just search that on our channel. You'll find uh, a really good video to show you every seating combination, every cargo combination. So there you go. That'll help you out a little bit. And uh, Sedona videos always do well over time on our channel. So they've, a lot of them have got some views. Russell says the best car he's ever owned. There we go. Oh, the 2019 the recliner seats. I, I missed the ones with the recliner seats, Albert, as well. So there was like Lazy Boy style seats in the SXL Plus model, uh, which were really cool. It also had a dual sunroof on the SXL and the rear sunroof opened, which is the only rear sunroof that opened on any of our vehicles. Very cool model. The reality is it didn't sell in high volumes and we have a Telluride now. So sitting that next to a Telluride, both AC uh, vehicles probably wouldn't move a whole lot, um, especially with that Telluride sitting there. So there we go. Why did they remove what? The, um, sorry, they removed the recliner seats. Yeah, they removed the recliner seats just because they got rid of that trim level. We have a eight passenger vehicle in the Telluride now that sort of sits in that luxury space. Uh, wasn't a huge seller, that luxury minivan. So um, that's why they don't have it anymore. They just try to balance out uh, the model lines. We really like the model mix that we have of the Sedona. They're really good value. Right now you can buy them for 120 days and no payments. I know we've got good value on all of them and uh, minivans do well in our market. So, all right, if there's any, any questions I missed, then let me know right now. Otherwise, we're gonna wrap it up in the next minute or so. I wanna thank everyone for joining us again. And uh, like I said, I, I really like minivans. I think if they came out with this van today uh, and it had never been invented before, you would say it's an ultimate crossover for family. It really allows family stress to go down because you're not compromising in any way. You get great SUV fuel mileage. You've got tons of space for all your gear, all your toys, all your stuff. And uh, they're really good vehicles, I think, just to take the stress out of your lives. So there we go. I'm gonna finish up right now. And again, join us at two o'clock tomorrow. We'll do this again. Uh, I had fun. I thought we would have less interaction on this uh, because the minivans seem to be sometimes a little less popular initially. 
Uh, but I really appreciate you joining me, and we will see you again tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Thanks, everyone, for joining.